If you have a basic understanding of the human body, you would know that the white blood cell is supposed to defend your body against harmful microorganisms. So, for example, if I have a white blood cell here, which I've labeled as mine, so this is my white blood cell in my body, and I'm going to draw out two cells here. I'm drawing out my red blood cell, that means it's a red blood cell in my body, and a bacterial pathogen that has also found its way into my body as well. Let's say I accidentally inhaled it, and now it's inside my blood vessel. So one of the favorite, one of my questions that I will ask my student is, which cell, the red blood cell or the bacterial pathogen, which one will get attacked by the white blood cells? And immediately students will be, it's quite intuitive, students will immediately go, well, obviously the red blood cell will not be attacked, but the bacterial pathogen will be attacked by the white blood cell. And that is correct. And if I ask my students the question, how does the white blood cell know that it has to attack the bacterial pathogen? Students will then say, very simple, well, the red blood cell is harmless and the bacterial pathogen is harmful. So students who studied science before, or if you have a rather superficial understanding of the immune system, the white blood cell will attack something that is harmful and it will not attack something that is harmless. That is, you know, obvious. But let's make it a little bit more complicated. Now, imagine for a second that I am going to add an extra bit of information. Now, let's say, as an example, my red blood cell is a type A red blood cell. Wait, wait a second. Actually, I am a type A. <laughs> my blood type is type A, by the way. Um, so yeah, okay. So let's say that my red blood cell is a type A, okay? Because you, if you remember, there are four types of blood, uh, A, A, B, B, and O, all right? So let's say my red blood cells is a type A red blood cell. And imagine if I went to the hospital because I've lost blood and I needed to receive a blood transfusion. So when I'm receiving a blood transfusion, they accidentally inserted a, the donor red blood cells into me, but they inserted type B into my body, which they were not supposed to. They are supposed to make sure that my blood type matches with the uh, blood that I receive. Um, now, inherently, the donor red blood cell is harmless because all it's supposed to do is it is just supposed to help my body carry oxygen. That's it. It does not cause an infection. But here's the weird thing. My white blood cells will still attack the donor red blood cell, type B. So the question here is why do the white blood cells attack that particular red blood cell? Because uh, if you say white blood cells only attack something that is harmful, it should just attack the bacterial pathogen. But now it's also attacking this donor red blood cell. Incidentally, I do need that red blood cell to help my body function, but my white blood cell goes, no, you need to die. So why is that so? You see, your white blood cell technically does not care whether something is harmful or harmless. What they do care is if something is familiar in the body or foreign or different inside the body. So then comes the question, how does the white blood cell know whether something, you know, is familiar or something is different? They don't have eyes. Yes, I know in my drawing here, my white blood cells have eyes, but in reality, white blood cells do not have eyes to see. So... If you remember in chapter 4, we talked about something known as membrane proteins, glycoproteins, and glycolipids, and one function that they can actually carry out is cell-to-cell -cell recognition. I'm showing you a picture of it over here. So if you would like to see that video, you can go back to that particular video. But this is where we are going to be talking about cell-to-cell -cell recognition. Cell-to-cell -cell recognition just means that your white blood cell is able to recognize whether something belongs in your body or does not belong in your body. As an example, I'm just drawing out my white blood cells here. They have a particular shape of glycoproteins. Now, uh, each cell can have many different types of glycoproteins. I'm just focusing on one, okay? Now, notice the shape of the glycoprotein on the white blood cell and the shape of the glycoprotein on my red blood cell. You notice that the shape is the same. 
So when the white blood cell goes over and feels the red blood cell, it doesn't see, it feels it, okay, and touches it, it will go, oh, you have the same glycoprotein, you are friend, or you are my self. The self just basically means you belong in my body. So because it's the self, the white blood cells will not attack it. It's as simple as that. Now, notice the shape of the glycoprotein on the bacterial pathogen is slightly different. So in this case, the white blood cells will determine that they do not recognize this glycoprotein because it looks different from what it's familiar with. And therefore, it is characterized or classified as non-self, which means to say, I am not familiar with this shape of glycoprotein, so therefore it does not belong in my body. Now, the donor red blood cell is inherently harmless. See, it's not causing any damage in our body technically, but the shape of the glycoprotein is also quite different. So your white blood cells do not care that it's a red blood cell. Your white blood cells are actually looking at the glycoprotein or feeling for the glycoprotein. Your white blood cells are detecting the shape of the glycoprotein. And as long as the shape of the glycoprotein is determined to be different, your white blood cells will say that this is non-self. And therefore, this will have to be removed from the body. Anytime a molecule on the organism, the molecule being glycoproteins, glycolipids, or proteins, are determined or recognized as foreign, it stimulates our white blood cell to carry out something called an immune response. And what's the immune response? The immune response is what happens when the white blood cells will destroy or remove the bacterial pathogen or the donor red blood cell. Now, to further talk about this a little bit, what I want you to understand here is um, many things can be determined or deemed as foreign. For example, the pathogen may have a glycoprotein, like I told you earlier, that is shaped differently. They may have a glycolipid that is also shaped quite differently. A glycolipid is a phospholipid molecule attached to a carbohydrate chain. Uh, sometimes the pathogen may have a particular membrane protein, like a carrier protein or a receptor protein or a protein pump that looks quite different as well. Or sometimes the pathogen may produce specific chemicals and those chemicals are said to be foreign materials. Anytime your white blood cell is exposed to a foreign glycoprotein, or any time it is exposed to a foreign glycolipid, or any time that is exposed to a foreign membrane protein, or any time it's exposed to a foreign material, these things are deemed as antigens. Antigen is a general encompassing term that is used to describe any material that is foreign to our body or different to our body. And antigens will cause our white blood cells to produce an immune response. That is how your white blood cells work. Your white blood cells do not care whether something is harmful or harmless. Your white blood cells only care whether that particular organism or cell has antigens. Antigens are just said to be foreign things. Anytime a particular organism or cell has antigens, your white blood cells are going to be activated and their task is to destroy that particular organism or cell in your body. That's how it works.